Good morning. Let's try it one more time. Good morning. Good morning. That's better. Just want to see if you're awake. Just want to see if you're awake. If not, I'm going to do it anyway. You already know me. Good to see everybody this morning. God's blessed us again to uh, be here and to serve him in spirit and in truth. Maybe it's the cold weather. That, that might be what it is. Maybe it's the, it's the cold weather. But we're so thankful to be here to worship him in spirit and in truth. Like we used to say when I was in school years ago, never let yourself be a fair weather Christian. You know what a fair weather Christian is? Christians that come to church when the weather's fair. But when the weather's not fair, okay, you'll get that later on. Leave, I'll leave that alone. Good to see everybody this morning. Welcome. Glad you are here worshiping with us. Uh, I'm delighted to see. She's going to hate me for doing this. I'm doing it anyway. Those of us who are on our uh, online services, in a way you've already met Sandy Champion, but she just showed up this morning. She is here. Um, I'm still convinced that this was a plan and nobody told me, but that's okay. We're glad. We're glad to see you this morning as well as those others who may have been visiting maybe with visiting with us in person we have a gift that we normally give the first time visitors and i, I know we'll get that gift to you sandy and so um, we're just glad to see you as well as those regular de dedicated faithful members uh, of the lord's church here in trent i'm uh, i'm glad to see you and those who are worshiping with us online as a part of our live stream we're glad to see you as well on the prayer list um, as well as those who we normally are praying for, um, Mosetta and Gail recovering from surgery. Um, last week, I learned of Kevin uh, Salas, I think is his name. He is a new convert, and he was uh, baptized at the Mender Street Church. Tangina, you can go ahead and give it, give, give it to Sandy. He was baptized at the uh, Mender Street Church, and he was a new convert about, I would say, three or four months after obeying the gospel, he was uh, in an auto accident and he was killed. Um, and so I told the brothers and sisters at uh, Mender Street I would add him to the prayer list for his, for not only him, but for he and his family to be a new convert, to be one so young. Um, I think he was 35, 40, I can't remember, but um, to be such young in the faith. Let's pray for his family at this particular time. Also, I got a call that uh, Leanna West is in the hospital she had recently had knee surgery i believe and then they readmitted her <clears throat> uh, another day or so ago and so let's remember to pray for her she's having uh, some other complications not as a result of the knee surgery um, but i did um, let them know that we would add leanna to our uh, prayer list and then richard i also want to get with you and cindy when she comes home maybe we can do what we can to encourage her since she uh, she lives here in Trent. She's also the mayor of, uh, of Trent. And so let's do what we can to encourage and to support her. Today was our special offering for the air conditioning uh, system. Again, thank you for those who contributed to that. Um, and those online who want to contribute, you can do that um, at our website and just in the giving drop down, just select the building fund and we'll make sure that that goes to the uh, air conditioning system. Today is also the fifth Sunday singing in Tuscola. Um, I haven't heard whether they are canceling that or not, so I'm going to assume it's still full speed ahead unless the roads get bad or the weather gets inclement. Uh, I still plan to go. Uh, Richard, you and I have to go. If not, we got to move out of Texas um, and we got to live in another state. And I don't want to live in another state. I'm just saying, I just, I just don't. They look forward to Richard uh, coming and uh, leading singing there. And I don't know what they want me to do, but I'll do something. I don't know. We'll, we'll think. That's going to be at 5 o'clock in uh, Tuscola at the uh, Jim Ned Valley Church of Christ. And uh, I'm just, I'm deliberate and intentional about getting us, Trent, out of the building here in Trent and openly participating with other uh, congregations so that we can encourage each other and encourage each other up in, 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 in the faith and in Christ. And I've said this before, then I'll get to the lesson. It's not going to be long, I promise. Um, if we don't encourage each other, then in about the next 15, 20 years, a developer is going to come and he's going to buy some good church property real cheap because all we need to do is then put a lock on it <clears throat> and then call it done. So I'm encouraging us to get out, support other congregations like the Fifth Sunday Singing 
at uh, Tuscola this afternoon. Also, Richard, I just found out about these two. Rising Star is having a gospel meeting November the 5th through the 8th. Darren Darwin Hunter is going to be their guest speaker. I'm going to try to make a night of that particular meeting, as well as a gospel meeting uh, in Coleman, the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st. Their guest speaker is going to be Daniel Harrell. And so I'm, I'm learning about all of this so that when we have events, we can invite people and we can reciprocate when it comes to uh, supporting each other and building each other up in the faith. So please put those two dates on your character, on your calendar, Rising Star. Um, their meeting is going to be November 5th through the 8th. And then um, uh, in Coleman, the Church of Christ in Coleman, their meeting is going to be 19th, 20th, and 21st. And uh, we're going to support them all that we can. Thank you for your first contribution towards the air conditioning system, $1,423. Uh, Thank you for that. Um, this will be the first of a couple of offerings, and we anticipate having to pay for that unit replacement over time. So this will work towards maybe a good down payment and maybe some some monthly payments. It just It's all a part of um, building maintenance. It's all a part of, of things that we have to do. I learned a long time ago when I was working at the university, um, you know, when it comes to any kind of a building, you always have to maintain structure, just like you do at home. The church has the same issues that you have at home. Maybe the church or a school has more zeros behind it. You may be wondering how to get $500 to pay something. The church or a, a, an institution may be wondering how to get $5,000 to pay for something. So it really is all relative. But thank you for the 1400 $23 we've already collected towards the air conditioning system. Let's finish this month. Um, Don't Take the Bait is the series that I've been doing this month, and it's from James chapter 1. And you remember, I've been saying all month long that Satan, with his crafty self, lays bait, lays traps for us. And sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you do all you can, but you grab that bait, and you, next thing you know it, you're ensnared in that trap. And really, don't take the bait has been trying to encourage us to do all you can to stay out of Satan's trap. Last week, um, I said that even if you take the bait, we looked at the life of David and Bathsheba, even if you take the bait, that's not the end of the world. God can still work with you, through you, and use you, just like he did with David. And the key is we have to make sure that we are penitent and that we repent and that we actually try not to make that same mistake again. You remember when Nathan the prophet came to David and told him that you are the man and told him that parable, scholars say it's at that point that he went out and he penned the 51st division of Psalm, verse 10, where it says, create in me, O Lord, a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me and, and, and blot out my transgressions. David learned his lesson. And then from that point, David was called a man after God's own heart. Let's finish it today. Don't take the bait. From the last verse uh, of that reading, verse 18, I want you to look at not being ashamed. The reading goes like this. James chapter 1 and verse 12, James says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. But each person is tempted, verse 14, when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Do you see the, the bait in the trap? Did you see it there? Same way you put the cheese or the peanut butter in, in the trap for the, the animal that you're trying to catch is the same way that Satan baits the trap based on our own evil desires. And we take the bait sometimes every time. Verse 15, though, says, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. Sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. 
and, and, and verse 16, don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. Verse 18 is where I want to finish today. He chose us. He chose to give us birth through the word of God that we might be a kind of first fruits of all that he created. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word and thank you, Lord, for the, for the power that it has to, to, to save our souls. Thank you for those who are in attendance this morning as well as those who may be watching us online. Help us, Father, to always try and stay out of the enemy's traps. But Lord, when we become ensnared, Help us to not throw the baby out with the bath water because we know you still love us. You work with us. You work through us. You shine through us. Help us to always be examples of everything that you say, everything that you do. To give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We thank you for this and all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. As I've told you throughout this month, let me reiterate today, verse 12 <clears throat> has some assumptions and that is, you can get a blessing from a trial. In other words, think about the times that you've gone through some hard times. And when you came through it, tell the truth, didn't you learn a couple things? Weren't you, weren't you better after they have come through those trials? Well, verse 12 has some assumptions. Then verse 13 has some advice. And that is, when you're going through your suffering, when you're going through your hard time, when you're going through your trial, Watch how you talk to yourself and watch how you talk to other people. James says it like this, let no one say I'm being tempted by God. In other words, watch our perspective on how we're suffering because we can either give glory to God or we can give glory to the devil. Verse 14 and verse 15 then has some, some accuracy. That is some accountability. If, and I said this week before last, if in fact you took the bait, Admit that you took the bait and don't blame anybody for it and allow God to use you accordingly. There's some accuracy in that scripture. And then verse 16 and verse 17 has some assurances. Just because you took the bait doesn't mean that you're the only one that ever took the bait. Doesn't mean that it's, you're, you're all alone. You're not all alone in your trials. We as brothers and sisters in Christ must rally around each other to support each other and not kill the wounded. You're not, you're not alone. Let me finish it like this. Verse 18 has some action. He chose us. And if you want to know the truth about it, our trials can give birth to our blessings, and that's a cycle. That's the whole circle and the whole wheel going around. Let's, let me go like this. Do you remember when we were younger? We were kids, and we would pair up to, uh, to, to choose teams. Maybe we were gonna play football, or maybe we were gonna play kickball, or maybe we were gonna play dodgeball. In this instance, I think they're getting ready to play soccer, and, and it would never fail. You know, somebody would get down, okay, I choose him. Okay, I choose you. And then you're praying, Lord, don't let me be the last one to get picked for a team. Now, that did never happen to yours truly. Uh, I went around. I went in the first or second round draft. I went, I went in the first or second round. But there were some people who were the last to get chosen. Richard, do you remember? And we'd always laugh. It's like, okay, uh, I I'll take Richard. No, you take Richard. I don't want Richard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But the miserable, they, they, they tell me, the miserable feeling that must ensue, being the last one picked. Well, you know, when it comes to God, that's not something that we need to worry about. Because God chose us. It doesn't matter if God chose us in the first round or the last round. Doesn't really matter. I got picked. God chose us. Verse 18, because of the fact that God chose me, Number one, I do not need to be ashamed because that new birth, that, that choosing, that choosing that God did, this new birth gives way and is a result of God's decision and not man's. In other words, the fact that God chose us in Scripture before time began is a blessing on the behalf of us and our relationship with God, not vice versa. See, unlike 
when you were choosing for teams, it was up to the team captain whether he wanted you or not. And if you were the last round, you didn't have to feel like a consolation prize because God chose us. We didn't choose him. I love Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. He chose us in Christ before the foundations of the world that we may be holy and unblemished in his sight in love. He did this by predestining us to adoption as his sons through Christ Jesus according to the pleasure of his will. Now don't let that word predestined clip you up. A lot of people will teach religiously uh, that predestined is only 144,000 going to be saved or a predetermined number. God is not picky like that, and that's anti-scripture. Everybody who has obeyed the gospel will obey the gospel. God set up a system that we could come and we could obey him. He chose us, not a certain specific number of us. Everybody who obeys God comes to God the same way. He chose us. And I don't know about y'all, that's good news. That, that's good news. God loved me so much that he chose me before the foundation of the world. He sent Christ to die on the cross for my sins and set up a system to where I could obey the gospel, come in contact with his blood, and my sins could be washed away. Thank God he set this thing up because he loved me so much. And my obedience to him, all I have to do is obey him and on a daily basis live like God and Christ is in me. Our response to God comes back. How do we how do we respond to the fact that God chose us through the water and through the word? I love the way Titus puts this. Titus says, at one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. <clears throat> we lived in malice, envy, being hated, hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God, Christ our Savior, appeared, he saved us not because of righteous things that we have done. In other words, yes, you're good, but you ain't that good. And, and, and not, not because your, your, your smile is great or your actions are great. No, it's because of Christ, God, and his love through Christ for us that he chose us. He saved us, not because of righteous things that we have done, because of his mercy. He saved us. How did he do it? Through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit when he poured out on us generously through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Christianity, and we've said this before, even our study of Acts, Christianity is far superior to anything the old law could ever have. And God set this system up not to demean the old system, but this is better than the old system could ever, ever produce. You remember in our study of Galatians, the old law was our schoolmaster. It was like our school bus. It takes us to where the learning should be. Now, yes, I learned quite a few things on the school bus. None of them was academically pleasing. <laughs> but, but, but the school bus job was just to take me to school where the l learning takes place. The old law, its job was to hold me, keep things in check until Christ came. Then when Christ came, verse 6, he poured that out on us generously through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Secondly, this new birth of which he chose us came to us through the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ for the remission of our sins. He loved us so. He loved you so. He loved me so that he set Christ to die on the cross for our sins. And there's nothing that we could do to earn that or to try to pay that back. You can't work hard enough but our life and dedication to him should be the biggest thank you that we ever should see. Ephesians chapter 1, I love this. When you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, you believed in Christ. You were marked with a seal of the promise of the Holy Spirit. In other words, God set this thing up to where it's all on God, and the response to that is our obedience to him. It's not because you're so good. Oh, you're good, but you ain't all that. It's not because you, you're, you're, you're our righteousness 
Old Testament says like filthy rags in God's sight. We need to realize it's all about God and not about us. It happens through this new birth that happens through the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, what is the gospel? It is the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ um, for us um, who, who believe, us who have obeyed the gospel. God set this thing up. Brothers and sisters, I want to remind you the gospel I preach to you which you received and you've taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold fast the word, hold firm the word that I preached to you. Otherwise, he says, unless you believed in vain. And the King James there says, I delivered unto you, first of all, the fact that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Those are the facts of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the reason that the old law and the old Jewish system had trouble with that, first of all, they didn't accept Christ other than just some other man. Secondly, they couldn't wrap their brain around how a man could die, be buried, and rose and rise again. Well, guess what? I can't wrap my brain around it either. But I accept it by faith in Christ Jesus because why? God said Christ down the cross for my sins. It's through the gospel then, this obedience to God's word, that you and I become ambassadors. You and I, uh, Paul says, are, are, are like uh, a first fruit uh, of God's remnant. We are God's first fruit. In the Old Testament, the first fruit was the best that was collected, the first of the crop, and that first of the crop was either given to God or given to the people. You give the best of your first fruits. We become kind of a, a redeemed remnant. And like I said, this old Mosaic law, when it came to harvest, those first fruits, that first part of the crop was given to God. That's one of the reasons when we give our offering, we don't give to God from the scraps. We give from God off the top. God gets his first, not the leftovers, not the leavings. God gave his best for us. So when I get my little money, I get God, give God his off the top. There was a sister that I went to church with years ago, and she was on a fixed income. And I always think about this when, you, uh, when we talk about giving. And she was on a fixed income. And every time, back then, social security checks were mailed. They were paper checks. And every time she would get her, uh, her, her paper check, she would go to the bank. She would go to the same teller. And that teller would take the check. And she had that teller trained. Okay, now I want God's money. And when I get God's money, I want it back so much in tens, so much in twenties, so much in this. One day she went to the bank. She told me she went to the bank and that teller wasn't there. Maybe she was sick or whatever happened. And Sister Rosewell, who's her name, Sister Rosewell said, little brother, it took me longer to tell that new girl what I wanted. I said, well, mama, you didn't, you didn't get ugly with her, did you? No, no, I didn't. She was patient. And I said, well, how, how did she have things turned out? She had a note written on her uh, pad inside her teller booth. When this lady comes in, make sure that you give her this many in 20s, this many in 10s, this many in 5s. <laughs> mama, we used to call her Big Mama. Mama, Big Mama, you, you had the people scared to death. No, I've just been going there a long time, and they know I don't play when it comes to God's money. I said, okay. And every time I, I, we talk about contribution, she's passed on. Now, I think about Sister Rosewell. See, now that's dedication. And that's putting God first in everything that we do. So when we give to God, I'm not talking about giving, not teaching on giving, but we give to God, we need to realize we give God based on our first fruits and not our scrap. It's a scripture if you need it, Exodus 23. The first fruits of your soil you must bring to the house uh, of the Lord your God. Everything that you get, God gets his first. God gets his off the top. Believers have been chosen out of the world to be God's possession, and we are especially devoted to him. Believers, we are to be holy, continually seeking to be righteous, just like God, and we are to be salt. We're not like salt. We are salt. We're not like light. We are light to the world. Ephesians says we are God's masterpiece. Chapter 2, verse 10, then I'm done. 
for we are God's handiwork. We are God's masterpiece. What's a masterpiece? A masterpiece is one of a kind. Okay, well, they, they, they broke the mold when they made you. They broke the mold when they made me. We are God's masterpiece. We are God's ultimate creation. And our one job, here's the, here's, look in the text, our one job is to do the works which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Everything that we do in the world as God's people, based on the fact that we are salt and we are light, we are to do God's work and we are to shine in the light of darkness, and we are to make change and make light of the fact that all of us are ambassadors for Christ. And people see us, they should see God magnified through us. Next month, I'm going to talk about thanking through it. Talking about the power of thankfulness and gratitude. See, a lot of times, piggybacking off of when we struggle, a lot of times we, we kind of get isolated and we want to kind of throw things out. But, but next month, since we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving and being thankful, I want to show you four instances in the scripture where people were having a hard time and their attitude dictated that they thank God through their struggle. And so I want to pull from that as we go through our struggles. And we're going to have them that we need to thank God and find something to be thankful for and thankful in, even though we are struggling. Tonight, we won't have our uh, talk from Nehemiah. I'll save those notes for, uh, for next week. We'll, all things being considered, we'll be in Tuscola for the fifth Sunday singing. Those who follow us online, again, I will send out uh, the link to their Facebook and to their YouTube not still not sure if they live stream but I will send those out just so that you will have those and with all hope this afternoon at five o'clock they will begin their live stream the invitation time for God is a time for us to come forward and to ask for prayer maybe there's something in your life that you're trying to handle on your own and it's not working out well let me let me just tell you this stop because you can't handle it on your own. The wise thing to do would be to come forward and to be to ask for prayer. Or maybe you have a Bible question, something that you've been thinking about that you just want the answer to. Or perhaps you've been studying the Bible, you've been thinking about it, and you know that your life is not properly aligned with God, and you want to make that right. You want to get your life more in sync with God. You come by hearing his word, believing it, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ, being willing to be baptized in water for the remission of your sins based on that act of obedience, God then adds you to his congregational family. If you're subject to the invitation in any way, shape, or form, we invite you to come now as we stand and sing the song of invitation. <laughs>